Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining this webinar today. I was uh, hoping to have uh, John from Seamless doing uh, a little introduction, but I guess uh, he's been caught somewhere. So uh, I would first uh, want to thank Seamless for organizing this webinar and sponsoring the gift you're going to get if you last until the end of this presentation. And with that, uh, let's go on and at any time John can uh, jump in if if he uh, feels like and uh, same. Uh, I am not too familiar. I'm sorry guys, I was running a little late there. OK, John, you're, <laughs> you, you're on stage. Go ahead. I'm on stage. I get to yes. be the dancing bear. Yes. All right. So uh, I just wanted to uh, let you all greet you guys to our first webinar around security and security focus for the year of 2023. Uh, it is February, so we we are getting started at the beginning of the first quarter on really focusing on uh, IT and IT security. And uh, today I would like to to introduce to you. Uh, Philip and Philip is one of our Philippe is one of our um, consultants who works on IT and does a lot of work around IT. He's got a huge presentation for us today to talk to us about security. So I'm going to let him get started and he can introduce himself and his company and what he can do for you and let you know everything about it. Thank you very much, John. And it, I do not see the chat because of the way it's all um, disorganized, I guess. So whenever there's a question, uh, feel free to uh, 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 ask the question on the chat and John will relay that to, to me and I'll uh, try to um, answer the best I can. So uh, basically just wanted that you know that uh, I've been there for a few years and uh, done a few things around cybersecurity. The rest is not very interesting. Uh, I, I am a certified cybersecurity architect uh, with uh, uh, over a dozen years of InfraGuard, which is this uh, partnership between the FBI and the private citizens. And as you can see, I've done a few things in large corporations as well, but I've done also five startups. So I know both spectrum of uh, the cybersecurity, the big thing and the small. And that's why I'm, we're here is to try to help small and mid-sized business companies uh, being able to do the best they can to uh, protect themselves. So let me uh, uh, give you a little bit of a uh, overall view. Uh, the, the typical path uh, for ransom attack, uh, you need to gain access uh, uh, in, in, in a certain way. So uh, you um, tend to send some phishing uh, emails and uh, seamless are some great tools to uh, help you try to avoid those and also uh, exploit vulnerabilities um, of different kind. Um, one thing really I would like to remind you is you see the term uh, shadow IT uh, that that's a jargon we use to talk about devices that people bring in uh, without the knowledge of the company and they are usually uh, put or oh, potentially uh, a spread for the company because maybe they don't have the right patches and the right software to monitor the tool um, and, and so on. Otherwise, uh, 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 all these part are automated. On, on red are the things where humans, attackers, are doing something. So they can try to compromise the privilege of, a, of, a, of an account. They can uh, move internally and establish footholds in different part of your network. That's why one of the things we suggest is to what we call segment network so that Basically, it's exactly the same as having a, a door with a code or something. You cannot go through the hole 
uh, office uh, once you're in and making sure yeah. that you get into the office with uh, 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 being known. They can also, of course, uh, exfiltrate sensitive data. And often I'm hearing people saying, oh, you know what? I don't have any sensitive data. Well, we'll find later that actually 80% of the uh, attacks that are happening exfiltrate some type of at least private information, uh, which is a sensitive data. And by the way, once uh, a PII, which is a private identifiable information, is being uh, taken by the, the bad guys, then you owe them three years of credit check. And of course, they can try to deploy uh, ransomware and we'll, we'll go through that. That's the worst uh, um, for a lot of people, uh, at least on, uh, in, in small and mid-sized business companies. So email remains the weakest link uh, of uh, for attack. It, it represents, you'll see different statistics. This one says 92.4. Uh, let's say it's a, vast majority of the attacks are still happening through emails. There are others and we look at them, but just remember that um, uh, e e whenever you're, you're using emails, we all busy and so on, and we sometimes don't pay enough attention. Uh, once again, Seamless has some really, really nice tools to try to help you prevent from clicking on the wrong thing. Um, and 76% of, of those infections actually to get ransomware. Um, most of the uh, breaches are um, successful because of social engineering. What we mean by social engineering is the fact that um, they find things about you on the internet. And uh, we, we don't have the time today, but uh, there, there's some great examples of, of, of how um, uh, the FBI demonstrated us how, uh, it's, how easy it is to actually even uh, adopt uh, someone just by uh, looking at the social media. The first thing you should be careful about is don't advertise you're going next week to Hawaii and, and, and you know, you're so happy and so on because basically you're making a huge billboard saying, hey, you know, I'm going to be, I'm wealthy. I can pay for uh, going to Hawaii. And by the way, my house is going to be empty. So just come and help yourself. 40% of, of malwares are uh, deployed via email attachments. So once again, be very careful about the various uh, attachments uh, that you can have. I'd like to help you understand a little bit the, the how the brain of those uh, um, criminals is working because they're very good at what they're doing. We all know that, right? And so the, the, the first thing is that they're really focusing on people because they know it's the weakest link. And they are good psychologists. They understand how they can get you to do what they want you to do. And especially they are going to dingle your natural curiosity. It's something that is going to attract you and you will want to learn more about it. Um, unfortunately, we all try to uh, want to help others and they are actually using that generosity to trick you. We all like a good bargain. And guess what? That also is coming in front of you. And above all, especially in the business environment, they're trying to exploit our time constraints. And it's especially true when now we're using smartphones rather than computers to handle emails or text messages or other things. 
because it's a, it's it's shorter information. It's a smaller screen. We don't see very well. We're doing that while we do something that it's not when you're driving. And uh, and boom, that's it. You click and that's what they want. So I thought it would be interesting to understand for uh, uh, you guys to understand a little bit how how it works. So basically you have uh, what we call business email compromises and email account compromises and we'll explain both. But one pretends to be you, that's the business email compromise. And the other one, actually they stole your information. They're you, they're sending mails rather than you. So the business email compromise takes three types of forms. They're, they're spoofing the domain, so they're making you believe that it's the uh, a domain that you trust. They are doing name spoofing, which means that they're, even though it's another domain, it looks like it's the domain that, that you trust. And then, and it's the most often the case, it's a lookalike domain. So they're changing one character or something or changing a little bit late rather than uh, let's say email.facebook.com it's going to be facebook.email.com and suddenly boom uh, you you see facebook you see email you say oh yeah i can trust that thing boom you, you've been trapped The email compromise is uh, uh, achieved by three ways. The reason we are asking you to build strong password and we'll see later during this presentation what we suggest about password, but they're using what we call password spray. Actually, you have available on the dark web a bunch of passwords that they can try one after the next. And and they can also try the whole dictionary so that if you or many other things. So it's pass plus tray. They, they, they're trying to spray until it works. The phishing is what we've talked about um, before. They're putting some kind of bait. They get you and they're able to uh, uh, to have you let them in. And then, of course, this malware so you went on a website or something and in the background it's looking at what it, you're doing recording your keystrokes and getting your password and then boom that's it the, the account is compromised and they can on your behalf send information send messages so here are a few uh, uh, screenshots that I, I, i've taken and we're not, we don't have too much time today to go into the details, but always look at the, uh, uh, you know, where it's coming. This one supposedly is DocuSign, uh, but, but it's a, a weird name, .ga for Gabon. I mean, come on. Um, you will not receive a DocuSign message from, uh, from Gabon. Um, the other one, uh, you have to do something about Office 360 and then next thing you see, it's a Hotmail account. Uh, this one is something about PayPal and PayPal is on Gmail and cannot use any other account. That's weird. And of course, urgency, we talked about it before, but you see now they're doing it, that, that's a text message. And uh, uh, if you don't pay attention, boom, you said you click or you say yes or whatever. And of course, we talked about the bargains. Um, and but this one um, uh, obviously is, is not a discount from uh, uh, Amazon. Oh, sorry, Facebook, even though it well, doesn't look too bad. So they typically have three ways of getting to you. They do the phishing. The phishing, you send the rod and you, you hope to get some fish. 
with the, the bait that you've put at the end. Spear fishing is is more precise. You you you're starting targeting certain type of people or or or, or, or uh, uh, groups or whatever. And whaling is about the same as as spear fishing, but you're going after the big guys, uh, the CEOs, the CFOs, because you know that or the controllers because you know that once you're there, you're going to get, have access to a lot of things. So. This uh, uh, statistics is interesting because in light blue, uh, so that was a, a, a simulated phishing attack done on more than 80,000 workers. And what you observe is that the on between the reported and the dark blue is the clicked, the one that went for it. You see that C fraud actually has been reported more than actually has been uh, uh, clicked on, which is interesting because. I did observe a lot of, of cases where suddenly someone that barely knows the CEO, especially in a large organization, uh, sees an email from the CEO rush on, on, on answering it. But the one that is really, really bad is the third one, the one where you see that actually people fall for internal HR mimics. And the number of people that have got, got their check uh, monthly check or bi-monthly check being sent to the wrong bank is actually phenomenal so always put in ch in place a way for you to confirm by phone a little bit like you have an mfa for for your bank a multi-factor notification where you have to get a message from the bank copy the number and give it before you can get into your bank account and by the way any website that offers you that flexi that feature, please do use it because it's one more step that they have to understand in order to to uh, to uh, do their activity. And yes, I know they do uh, counterfeit also the phone numbers and the ID numbers on the phones will go through that. But still, it's better to do it. So be aware the, the the message I'd like you to take away from today is really. Be aware, be think on your feet. Try to understand if it is something that they're trying to do from a web page. By the way, on the web page, even a, a, a they can insert malware into a picture. They transform the pixels. Social network, don't, don't brag too much about what you're doing in social network. Honestly, it's, it's an easy way for people to understand and, and, and understand your psychology as well, so that then when they do a, a, a vishing attack, we'll explain what it is later, which is on the phone, they're using all kind of tricks. They're using the names of your uncle and everything. USB drives is 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 a known one. I mean, they uh, keep on uh, uh, having those uh, 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 malware inside the USB drive. You exchange information. You just you think that you're just exchanging a file, but you're doing much more than that. And then email, we, we talked about it already. And that's what you don't want to see. And please, when you see that, don't click on anything. If your computer is connected physically to uh, a network, unplug it. If it's connected via Wi-Fi, which is most of the case today, you unplug the Wi-Fi uh, uh, router. So that way, there's no more connection between the Internet and the computer that has been encrypted. Then you call Seamless. And they will find the right people to start. Taking care of it before it spreads. 
But yep, we'll start try. digging into it. Please leave it unplugged until we get there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Be, be, leave it unplugged because in in a computer, there's what we call live memory. So I don't want to start going into <laughs> big. Uh, uh, explanation, but basically it's a memory that if you switch off the computer, that part of information is gone. And that's the crucial part because that's where we're going to find the signature of the malware. Once we have that, we'll talk later about backups, we'll be able to, to reverse engineer what they've been trying to do. So typically what is the uh, infection phases? Uh, they uh, once they're in, they do uh, reconnaissance of uh, the network. So uh, it's exactly like you know you enter into a house you don't know. Say oh oh the kitchen is here. Oh good to know. Um, um, oh that's the living room. Oh that that's where all the audio is. Oh they have nice equipment here. Well it's ex translate that into the the network of of your company and they do the same they start figuring out things they start reading documents and so on finding invoices the number of fake invoices that are being used is totally amazing and they move laterally so they they're trying to open all the doors they can open and they, and if the do if, if there's a lock at the door they will try to force the, that that lock because they want to understand what's going on into the company. The time is on their side. During all that time that we have not found them, they keep on going left and right and so on and, 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 fi and find things and, and see how they can, how much they can get out of this. One of the company I used to work for, a very large company. We found out that the guys have been in for three years. Fortunately, we caught them before they started operating on us. So, of course, the first thing they will do is destroy the backups. And we'll have a slide exactly on that that is going to explain you a little bit of what's happening. And then they, and they extract the data or they lock the data. But usually they always extract a little bit of data because they want to prove you to you that they've been able to get inside and they, and they have sensitive information about you or your company. And then they distribute and detonate the ransomware. So if you look at the sequence of backup, I, I'm hearing that all the time. Oh you know such and such company provides me a backup seamless do pr propose you a real what i call a real unalterable backup because when you see what you're seeing here they're gonna wait they're gonna wait until the la the the oldest backup has been if they know you have a policy or let's say 100 days they will wait 101 day before detonating because that way they know that you don't all the backups you have have been corrupted as well we don't have the time today you can certainly ask seamless they have some great tools to help you make sure that actually you have a stronger backup than the regular backup the regular backup will allow you to get the file that you erased by accident two days ago or whatever and put it back, those kind of things. But will not help you when you have a, a, a ransomware. Most of the case of, of, the, of the time. So what do you want to do? You want to think on your feet. Um, I've done 20 years in the oil and gas industry and uh, did different research and, and especially uh, for most of you guys that are in Houston, you remember Macondo and the, the, what happened with the BP uh, um, uh, platform. We studied extensively uh, what happened and, and what, how we could prevent that in the future. One thing that came very clear from the 
Harvard professors that were helping us is that in front of a fire, in front of something really, really big, we tend to go back into what is called our reptilian brain, which is really on the back of the uh, of the head. And that one is very binary, is fight or flee. It's when primate a type of thing. So we want to avoid that. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about having plans so that like the, the pilot uh, of an airplane has a checklist so that even if things are getting tense, he, they follow certain uh, steps to make sure that they land with us uh, inside the plane safely. It's true of any special ops of any kind. They do the same. And they do an after review. And we'll see that at the end on, on, on how we do that. But for now, one of the first thing I want to, to stress is make sure that you use random password, basically, or very difficult to guess password and multi-factor authentication. And yes, change your password between 30 to 90 days, but try not to extend more than 90 days. Because that way, if, if it's been leaked, then after uh, a, a certain amount of time, you've changed your password, that password's not gonna work anymore. <laughs> on a web page, always make sure you have the little S on HTTPS that says S is for secure. It's not a pure gu guarantee, but it, but it helps. It, it's, it's one more thing that, that protects. If you don't know the person that send you an email with an attachment, please, please, please don't open that attachment. Same deal. Ask for someone to look if this is genuine or not. You have the tool you, through Seamless. You can have the tools to go and check that. And if it's good, it goes back into the, the, the regular emails. But at least, you, because that's the payload, usually that's the payload. People click on something on an email. Worst, I've seen people trying to be, do good and forward the email to their colleague and say, what do you think? And the colleague <laughs> did click on it. <laughs> so uh, just don't do that, please. One thing that is absolutely vital is to have everything software and operating system on auto update. Why? All those companies, Microsoft, uh, uh, AWS, whomever, whomever you're using, they're very hard at work. Whenever there's a, 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 a failure in the code that is found uh, uh, via new malware, they go out and they fix it and they send you an update. So that means that whenever you have everything updated, you're more protected on all known malware that are coming your way. Of course, by now, run an anti-virus, anti-malware, and, 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 and anti-spam and phishing. Um, um, it, it's, we can't even live without that. When I was uh, uh, in charge of the intranet for the Olympics, uh, that's 20 years ago, uh, the FBI agent with whom I was working told me hey, a trick. Said, why don't you use what he called a trash email? And since I have many trash emails, which are basically email I give away whenever I, I, I want to get that information or whatever, but I really don't want to have that coming all the time on my regular email. So you put that on a trash email. His way was actually to add a digit that would give the year and he would change every year. Uh, whatever it is you, you do, that will save you time because and put you uh, less at risk because then you know that you have a bunch of, of emails that are arriving in, in a secondary quality type of, of email box. 
as we said before, whenever you swap files, whether it's a USB drive or nowadays on the cloud, be very careful. Always make sure that you trust the person that is sharing something with you. And that something can be a file of any kind, a PDF, a Word document. So, of course, any document like uh, 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 that can have macros enabled, and that's why Microsoft actually now is telling you, hey, you know, if there's a macro on that Excel spreadsheet, do you really want to run it? Because they know that, you know, I mean, if it's a macro you wrote, then you can trust it. If it's someone you don't know, eh, not too sure. We coined the term a while back of cyber hygiene, and it, it, it relates to the fact that, you know, it's like us brushing our teeth at least once a day. Um, be aware of the emails you're receiving. Keep all your devices on auto update. You realize that I'm repeating things. You know, I used to be a professor in universities and I was told you always have to repeat things. Use a VPN if you're in a public area or even nowadays there are uh, apartments buildings that are providing common internet uh, so you don't even have to have your own Wi-Fi. They give you a username and, 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 and password. Use a VPN. You don't know who is behind that Wi-Fi wi and how they're filtering that information. And on an airport, for sure, 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 hotel, airport, uh, bus station, whatever, um, um, absolutely use a VPN. And, and a good one. Let me do a little uh, uh, interjection here. The internet had gotten us used to have things for free. But maybe you remember your grandparents telling you there's nothing like a free meal. That's true on the internet. So whatever you have free, you're actually giving away something that you may or you may not know what you're giving away, but you are giving away something. And mostly it's information about you. So um, some of those VPNs, basically as, as almost as bad as the public Wi-Fi because they're free and the then they can scan whatever arrives at the end of the of the VPN. So buy a good strong VPN, as seamless as us. There's a lot of good good ones to be used. Use a password manager. Uh, uh, whatever it is, but at least use one. Um, there's even a free one, a Bitwarden uh, ha has a free version and it's they're not you're not giving away anything. They're just doing that to attract you to then buy their uh, their commercial version. Never use the same password on different accounts. Always different passwords. So that's why you nowadays so many passwords to be used. There's no way you can remember them unless you write them as I've seen in one company. Everything was on one spreadsheet. Oh yeah, what? How, how great is that? You know, I'm I'm a hacker. I get that. That's it. I have, I have the keys to the whole kingdom. Again, I'm insisting change your password regularly. If you have the choice, rather than, I know a lot of websites will use de facto your email address as your username, then fine, use that. But otherwise, use something else, because then the, the person trying to, to impersonate you have to guess one more thing, which is your email is known by almost everyone. So that's already an easy one. So now you just the password if it's two factor notification. Ah, OK, maybe there's one, but then you have a third level. If you create your own user ID and you don't reuse the same one all the time and your password manager will help you do that, then you, you increase your security. For the few passwords that you have to remember, 
like the one to get onto your computer or the one to get onto your password manager. Use the name, the title of a, of a movie, of a book, of a song, of whatever it is, something that is long, change the spaces with uh, uh, special characters, eventually uh, play with the upper and lower case. I know some people are replacing a capital E by a three. Whatever it is, it's going to make life more difficult. And anyway, that's the password that really you're using. You have to be already on one of your device to be able to access your, your uh, uh, password manager. Did you read that? But over 555 million stolen passwords are available on the dark web. That's what I mentioned before. And believe me, a computer goes through all those millions of, pa of stolen passwords pretty quickly. So consider the path phrase that I just mentioned for the few that you have to, to remember. Unique passwords for everything. Employee and password manager, recycle the, the, the passwords and MFA whenever it's possible. So what are uh, hackers after? There's really two big type of, of, of hackers and, and they're, they are bleeding and I will explain you. But most of the ones you're going to be as a small and mid-sized business company uh, uh, facing are criminals. And those guys, they, they, they want to go after your reputation, they want to lock your data, and they want to try to get personal information so they can resell them. Or of course, create, put a ransomware to get the money, of course. The state organizations tend to go after intellectual properties, bids, money flow, Bids is a big one. They they understand what you're going to bid, and they underprice you or or something like this. The reason I say there's a gray line between uh, the uh, state and criminal organizations, is that some of the state organizations basically uh, they're told, okay, you, you do business for us, uh, we're not going to pay you. But it's fair game. Uh, you can go and hack others and get ransoms and whatsoever. That's how there's a lot of uh, um, ransomware that detects whether or not you have a Russian keyboard. And if you have a Russian keyboard, they're not going to attack you. Read between the lines. So what are the type of attacks? You have the phishing, which is the one we know the most. We're sending email, we're re it reveals some personal information, and we get to have the password or a credit card number, or worst, the social security number. Let me stop for a second here. We're in tax season now. I should have published this morning, but be on the lookout. Tomorrow I'll publish an article on LinkedIn on tax season. Filing as early as possible, because for Uncle Sam, the first, there's only one social security number per person. When it's been used once to fill out your, uh, your returns, then that's it, that, that, that's the one. That means if someone had stolen your SS social sec security number, you're in trouble. If you go on Unconsum's uh, um, website, you actually can now create a PIN number. And rather than putting your social security number on your tax return, you can put a PIN number. I've been CEOs of many companies. I never wanted to see one single social security number from anyone for whatever reason. And I didn't want it to be on, on our network. It would go directly to the uh, PEO 
that I was handling our uh, um, um, stubs and so on. Social security number is, is really a golden key in the United States. Ransomware, I think you've all heard about it, but basically there's a malicious software that is designed to block access to a computer and, and the whole system. And it can go in stages. You can have first a, a small piece of software that does what we call call home. They call outside and say, hey, you know, that's it, I'm in. And through that port or whatever, send me the rest of the executive goal so that I can block the whole system. Smishing is with the text messages and you're gonna see more and more of that. And then the last one is vishing is over the phone and I have a few slides on, on the phone because we, we're seeing more and more of that. What is interesting, I didn't put it, we don't have the time today, but the, the statistics of depending on, the, on, the, on, on your age, you're more aware of one of those types. The, the younger generation, they 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 uh, they know about smishing all uh, than the other. Then you go fishing, and and the older generation they 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 know about fishing. But you should be aware of all four of them because they're they're really they're gonna try to get to you by any means. So the payment scams is really something you, you want to guard your information. Do not share a temporary access code or whatever if you haven't initiated the call. I can tell you that once I received something, I thought it was fishy. I went back to the number that was on the back of my credit card, called, they transformed me to another department, and then other departments said, oh yeah, we did try to call you. Good, I initiated the call. I feel safe that I'm talking to the bank that I want to talk to. It's okay to hang up or to not respond if you don't recognize, if you think it's suspicious. It's fine. I mean, if you don't respond, they don't leave a message, then already you can forget about that number. Actually, as far as I'm concerned, that number goes into the, 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 the blacklist. And as I mentioned, reach if there's anything, reach directly to the company, the, the bank, the, the, the insurance, whatever, from a trusted source. So it's a number that is on their website, on the back of your card, on, on, on snail mail uh, 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 um, notification that looks really coming from that institution. And, and question always uh, those bizarre payment re requests. I mean, the gift card, uh, 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 transfer thing through Zelle, uh, uh, that um, you, you may think that Zelle is, is it's totally fine. It's used by many banks, but they have actually, they usually the banks now are putting big warnings saying, hey, you know, we cannot guarantee that you're sending it to someone that that that, that is uh, um, uh, credible on the other end. Are you sure it's the right phone number? Um, and usually com legitimate companies will not ask you to send money to anyone um, or correct a problem or get a refund. There, there will be some, some paper trail on, on all of that. So just a few numbers to, to close and, and, and maybe answer a few questions. Why do we want to build a stronger cyber posture? I don't have the latest statistics. This one ends in 2021, but given the curve, we have an exponential uh, uh, ascension here. So you have more and more ransomware damage going on year after year. 80% of the breaches of organization include, as I mentioned earlier, some kind of private information. 
And believe it or not, you risk to lose your entire business due to cyber attack. I'm not inventing it. I've put in here the, the, the uh, title of an Inc. Uh, magazine uh, article. You can go on Forbes, you can go on anyone. You'll see the statistics. 60% of small businesses fall within six months of a cyber attack. An attack occur every nine seconds. On average, for an, a small business company, small to mid-size, it's, it's over half a million dollar of cost. And we see on the news the, the big things, Colonial Pipeline, Target, whomever else, being attacked. The, it's only 20% of the attacks are after the, the, for, the, the Fortune 500. Why? Because as I explained to you earlier, they take their time. They, they want the big money and they're going to take years to do that. 80% of the, the attacks are going after the mid-size and small companies, especially because they are usually not as uh, protected as the big ones. So it's an easy go. And on average, if you're not prepared, it's going to take you 21 days to recover from a ransomware and to put everything back on in order. So that means if you don't have 21 days worth of cash to cover all the expenses while you're getting back on a float, then you're going to start struggling and everything. And then unless you have a good banker that really helps you, you're going to be part of that uh, statistic of the 60%. 95% of the breaches are caused by some kind of uh, human error. I won't go into the details, many different ones, but you've seen how email is a big one. And everyone is, is impacted. You, you, the financial impact, we talked about it. Repetition, reputation, and trust loss is huge. I work on M&A. The first thing we do is find out if that if the company that is being bought has been uh, uh, attacked in the past and how they reacted to the attack. Of course, you have loss of productivity because suddenly now you have a big fire to fight rather than doing business as usual. And legal liability, we talked about the personal in the, uh, uh, identifiable, identifiable information, but there's a lot of other information that can be stolen and that disrupt totally your, your, your business because people now work on something else. So we said human nature is cybersecurity weakest link. Remember emails, we talked about emails, we talked about password, we talked about being discreet in social media. Um, yes, you can do things by accident and disclosing certain things, then don't try to hide it. Go talk to, some, to, to, to your supervisor or whatever, let's figure out a plan around that. And of course, uh, web surfing, you start going into some shady, website and so on, and boom, you have malwares and that the, the are dropped on you. And that's why cyber insurance rates are increasing like crazy. And the orange bar is interesting because basically, uh, to make it simple, the lower the, the orange bar, the more money the uh, 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 cyber insurance is making. The higher bar, the less money they're making. And and this is the rate increase that we are observing uh, uh, with the cyber insurance. So what does this mean? That means now it's becoming even more difficult to get a cyber insurance, and they're going to ask you zillions of questions. Seamless can help you answer, and maybe uh, ask us to help. We'll see. But even you need the more prepared you are on cybersecurity, the more chance you have to be able to get a better rate 
on your cyber insurance if you elect to have a cyber insurance. So if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Anyone remembers who said that? Benjamin Franklin, just a few days ago. And the good thing is that when you plan, when the event occurs, then quickly you know what to do because you have checklists, you have ways of doing things. You launch your incident response plan, and then you perform the right action to, to, to remediate and then decide to the next step. So typically you do an assessment, you plan, you do a cyber incident response plan, or you revise it because it's a, it, it, it's a loop, it keeps on going. You do exercise. The number of companies that told me, oh, I do have a cyber incident response plan. When was the last time you used it or looked at it? I don't know. I don't exactly know exactly where it is. Okay, you don't have one. So you need to do what we call tabletops, where we simulate things that could happen. And then you have to revise because suddenly you realize, oh, you know, the structure of the company has changed. Now it's not uh, Murray that is going to take care of that. It's, it, it's another person and, uh, and, you know, responsibilities change and, and, and so on. And you integrate your plan with, with everyone you do business with. And you've been brave enough to, to uh, stay until uh, the, almost the top of the hour. And Seamless is offering you a $100 value uh, uh, free security assessment with uh, uh, Psyker. We'll spend an hour with you and uh, identify the uh, uh, different uh, parts of uh, how you're organized and, and, and what you should be doing, or at least have a, uh, an idea of, of, of what we call your posture. And this is not just IT. This is how the whole company is organized to respond to the cyber risk. And we did have one question that kind of relates to that. They asked what the next step is. So, I mean, the next step is for sure. Hey, reach you out know, to us. We'll, we'll, we'll I'll start go back. The so you write down this SMB leaders and you contact Seamless and you'll be in touch with us. Cool. Um, we had one other question in there and somebody was asking, you know, um, about, you know, what what are the biggest things that they should look at for email spoofing and to, to prevent it? And, you know, uh, personally, I think training, training being number one, right? The end user, the person is is absolutely the best defense against anything because once we become educated, like, hey, change my routing number to this. If I pick up the phone and I call and I confirm that with the company, I've 100% rectified it. If I have software, it may only be you know, 30, 40, 50, maybe 70, maybe 99%. But even at those numbers, that 1% is too much to lose thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in a transfer that went to the wrong person. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I mean, the, the number of uh, whenever, I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but uh, it, it's it, it's just like, it, it, it's the standard one. They, they one company, I was, uh, uh, a consultant for uh, at a time we were doing uh, uh, some consulting uh, in the Middle East and the owner of the company thought ah you know uh, yeah they're a little bit late to pay but it's the Middle East we know that it's, it's a different pace than us that's fine one day picks up the phone say hey you know what about my uh, invoice oh we paid a month ago yeah they paid the wrong people some, yeah Someone sent the email say, and by the way, that can happen also with HR. So really always, that's one of the things we put in place in the policies and procedures for the companies is to make sure that you have a phone conversation that confirms whatever email. Yeah. Well, great. Well, I think that's perfect. 
Is there anything else you want to add before our last couple of minutes roll by? No, guys, uh, be more than happy. Follow us on uh, on LinkedIn. You you you'll uh, we we share a lot of tricks. So you just you have the barcode, you, uh, and and of course you have my email address if you want to ask me something directly, and uh, take advantage of this uh, uh, offer. And uh, and then I will actually add to that some uh, other documents that uh, uh, um, we we're not done by us, but we uh, are very good to help you understand the URLs and how they people are trying to trick you. Right, and guys, for myself, I, I really appreciate the, the 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 advice and the understanding and the the education today. So from Seamless, thank you. You're most really welcome, good. And, and thank you, John, for organizing that that uh, webinar. Sure, and we will be recording this, or we have recorded this, and we will be posting it out there and sending it off to different people. So, I know we've had a couple requests for that. So, we should give back some good responses. And you have a great day, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your attention. Take care. Can you end it? I guess I just hang up.